Hello everybody, Andrea Majeski here with Dental L Tutoring. I wanted to talk to you guys about some core values today. So these are specifically core values. We're not talking about the whole ethics unit, we're not even talking about ethical dilemmas, but just kind of core values. Because I find people get confused when talking about core values and they don't really know what they are and they don't really know what they mean. So it's not the same thing as the different type of ethics properties that you want to work through if you have an ethical dilemma. Core values is kind of something all on its own. So let me just pull up my slide here and I'll show you guys what I mean. So core values. So these are the different core values. Now, depending where you live, they may be a little bit different, but at least I'll talk about the ones here specific to Ontario. So you guys have an idea what they are, so you can kind of work through them and understand. So basically, as dental professionals, we have to always be thinking ethically, legally, and core values kind of plays into that point. When we have a difficult patient, when we have patients who don't want x-rays, when we have just patients in general, you know, things in general with the dental office, things come into play that we have to think to ourselves, okay, how should I be act, um, acting? What should I be thinking? Things like that. So confidentiality, that's a big one. So we must maintain confidentiality with all of our patients at all times. I find this is pretty simple, pretty basic. But basically, we can't be talking about patients to other patients. We can't be talking about patients to our husbands, to our spouses, to our families. We shouldn't even be talking about our patients to other mem um, members in the dental office unless they're involved with their treatment. So let's say you have three dental assistants in your office and one dental assistant specifically is dealing with that patient when he or she goes to see the doctor for a filling. You shouldn't be talking to the other two um, dental assistants in the office about that patient. So it's not right to say, oh, well, did you know he has hep C, you know, you just shouldn't be talking like that. Keep things confidential. Um, something to mention too with, with um, confidentiality is you know how you, you want to put alert stickers on your patient's charts if they have high blood pressure, if they have hepatitis, if they have AIDS, if they have diabetes, pretty much anything that warrants a medical alert. Confidentiality means you do not put it at the front of the chart. You can put it inside, but never at the front or the back because if that chart is sitting there on the front desk, that's breaching confidentiality to have it say in this big medical alert uh, sticker aids or diabetes or hates the drill or hates to have his teeth floss, you know, something like that. Never put anything at the front of the chart. I see it way too often, so I just wanted to mention that. Um, societal trust. So we need to remember that the patients and general uh, public trust us. And this trust is based on our actions and behaviors. In my opinion, it is something that we earn. So we have a general trust from the public that we know what we're doing, what we're talking about. We are prof uh, professionals. So us talking in the hall of the dental office to the other dental assistant or dental receptionist, how we got wasted on the weekend is hindering their trust of dental professionals. Even I, I will take it as far as when we're out in public, not working. Um, if you have road rage, and you stick up your middle finger to the car beside you because they cut you off. And then you happen to see that person is your patient that afternoon. You know, what are the odds? Probably wouldn't happen, but it could happen, right? So societal trust means that, that we should always try to be maintaining a professional attitude. Us giving somebody the middle finger, yes, we did not know that they were our patient that afternoon, but that doesn't look so good, right? That looks horrible. And that patient would have every right to say, I don't want to see her because she stuck up her middle finger at me, you know? So that's just kind of what that is based on. Um, Non-maleficence. So we treat our patients in a way that minimizes harm. So not doing harm to our patients. Us forgetting to put on the lead apron does harm to our patients. Us ignoring the fact that they have severe perio and not telling them is causing harm to our patients. Us not probing every year for um, dental hy um, hygienists is causing harm. As a dental assistant, if we um, 
Um, hmm, let me think. How could you cause harm to your patient? If you were just careless in some way, shape, or form, if you didn't give them a rubber dam, if you didn't place the rubber dam on while you were doing the herb, while the dentist was doing the root canal and they got bleach in their mouth, that's causing harm. You know, things like that. We should never be causing harm to our patients. Um, beneficence. So we owe it to our patients to engage in health promotion and disease prevention activities, as well as to keep abreast of new changes in healthcare and the dental profession. So this is talking about continuing education. So we need to show that we know what we're talking about. Us taking a course once every five years is not part of our core values. We need to be constantly learning, practicing, teaching even. We need to do the best that we can for our patients. A lot of people get um, non-maleficence and beneficence mixed up. There is a difference. So non-maleficence means not causing harm and beneficence basically means to be continuing on with education. And then the next one, just um, justice and fairness. So everyone should have access to the same quality and affordable oral health care. Just because patients are enrolled in certain programs, it doesn't mean that they should should be treated differently. If a patient doesn't have insurance, um, you know that doesn't mean you treat them any differently. Hopefully, if let's say parents of a five-year-old don't have insurance, they know to sign up for programs to help them with that so they don't have to pay for treatment. So everybody should be fair. Everybody should treat people accordingly. It doesn't matter how much money they have or don't have. As dental professionals, we always need to be fair. And then veracity. So we must always be truthful. This is a big one, and they love to talk about this. We need to be truthful. If the patient has gingivitis, tell them they have gingivitis. If we made a mistake on something, make, you know, be honest and tell them we made a mistake. If, um, let's see, they need those, if they need that um, periapical x-ray because you suspect or the dentist suspects that they have an infection, be truthful and say, you know what, we can't treat you properly. We cannot diagnose without this x-ray. So always be truthful. So this was just kind of an overall of the core values. Um, you guys can look through the code of ethics more specifically. Um, the dental assisting code of ethics, you don't go into it as greater detail because you don't have as much insurance as the dental hygienist does if we do something wrong, but you still have to know the difference between the core values and the different types. So I hope this helped you guys. Please make sure to comment below if you have any questions and I will see you guys in the next one.